Uh, well, welcome, and uh, I'm just something a little bit different today. I, we like to have fun. You know, we had our Paha Awards. Uh, we, we generally try to get a few yachts, a few laughs here. I, I want to really have a serious conversation with you. I, I've New Year causes some people to reflect, and of course, I'm like anybody else. And I'm thinking about this political year, and I have come to a very depressing, and I've come to this conclusion reluctantly, but I think I'm right. And that is that we have been massively, and I'm gonna say we, I mean everybody, has been massively ineffective in dealing with this threat that we have from Trump and these threats to our democracy, to our country, to decency, to the rule of law, to all of the shit you can think of. It's not working, all right? It what really triggered me was, all right, so January the 6th, and we all said, well, this is too much. This is a bridge too far. Clearly, they'll see the way. Of course, no such thing happened. Then we had the January 6th committee. And let me be very clear. They did an admirable job. I, I thought the, the video in that was extraordinary. I thought the members of the committee were crisp. I didn't. I was scared they were going to pontificate and bloviate. They did not. The witnesses were very good, were very direct. The evidence was compelling. The coverage was great. I, I have to give everybody credit. They really covered it. They made news of Benny Thompson and uh, Liz Cheney and no one could have done a better job. And then I look at the data and they, it's going the wrong way. It's going the wrong way. People's attitudes are changing about January 6th. They're changing to think it's like a tourist visit or it's been an overblown deal. And it, it wasn't that there was a lack of effort or a lack of creativity or, or anything else in, I, we, we've had 30,000 fact check boxes that the Atlantic, which has been around since before the Civil War, it's, it's one of the more respected publications. It's got, I know a lot of, I know the editor, I know people that work there, that they're all awfully bright people, very competent. They did an entire issue on the threats of Trump. It mattered nothing. The New York Times, who did cable TV. How many I mean, me? I go, well, I, Ari, I, I'll tell you, it's, it's all about turnout and we got to get our people out to vote or Trump's criminality is going to come back and haunt him. Bah! They do panels and they go, well, Neil, the, the interlocutory degree that's coming down from the uh, on bonk and uh, we're waiting on the, the appeals and the three and well, whatever you say, Andrew, and then back to you, Rachel, and nothing fucking happens. It's all, it's all great. They're all knowledgeable lawyers, prosecutors, hosts. They sit there, we all watch it, and then pfft, nothing. And Trump's more ahead than he's ever been. More, fewer people think January 6th was any kind of what it was as a an assault on the temple of democracy, the Constitution, I don't know whatever the fuck you want to say. It's going the wrong way. It's not working. Everything that we're throwing is spaghetti at a wall and none of it is sticking, me included. And it's, it's hard when you start in your 80th year and you, you, you know, like anybody else, I have an opinion of myself. And the opinion I've come to is, I don't matter. It doesn't matter. You can, you can prepare, you, you can be on TV, or you can write pieces, you can have a YouTube channel, you can have a podcast, and nothing, nothing. And, you know, we, we got to, like, try to think of something different because what we're doing is really, really not working. Um, so I, like a lot of you, I 
go, I look at old movies, I listen to old songs, I, I, I have a few bourbons, I think, I get frustrated. And we got to try something. And, you know, I see the stories, and, and President Obama went to the White House, they leak a story that the campaign is messed up and they need to have this. Or uh, people say, well, James, it, it, they got to get better staff work. Or this. It doesn't matter. It's not the staff. It's not the TV spots. It, you can get the best Hollywood people or the best creative people in the world to produce TV spots. You can have the most organized and fearsome staff that you can imagine. It can be interconnected with the White House and the campaign. And you can, it ain't going to matter. I, I'm just, I, I hate to be this kind of pessimistic and down, but I've just watched this stuff go on and on. Maybe the polls are wrong. I don't know. Pretty hard for me to believe they're all wrong. Maybe it's right that, that as people focus on this, 91 indictments, maybe they'll try them in May. Maybe they'll get a conviction. Maybe a conviction will matter. I I, 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 maybe the, the strategy that the, as the economic recovery, which is impressive by any any definition, maybe it'll be okay. And but I, I don't. I just can't sit here, and I don't think you can too. And and how do how do we get involved? And in, in, I don't have any grand strategic insight here. And I was really racking my brain. I was felt depressed. I felt like, I don't know, like I, I, I just had no effect. You know, I thought I could have effect on things. I didn't. And I was watching Animal House, which I frankly think is one of the five greatest movies ever made. You can think that or not think that, but I'm going to refer you toward the end of the movie and we're going to put a link up here. And the guy says, we could fight by conventional means, and that, but that would take a long time and there would be a lot of casualties. And then he says, what's called for here is a really futile and stupid gesture. And I think he's right. I think what we need is a really futile and stupid gesture. I think that mockery is the way to try to penetrate this. Now, I got I got some authority here. I'm gonna, we're going to put up with Mel Brooks, maybe the greatest comedy director of all times. This is the way that Mel Brooks said you go after somebody, and he was referring to Hitler, so whatever. Then I'm going to refer to you what Mark Twain said about the power of mockery, the power of ridicule. If we're insufficiently using ridicule, and I want, I want us, and I mean us, I mean me, my friends, all of you that watch this YouTube channel, all of you that have friends that watch this, all of you that own, I don't know, whatever chains or block chains is whatever I don't know what the fuck it is, but whatever, however y'all communicate with each other, we have to communicate mockery. So let me give you an example. You're looking at the background. All right. I have three years here, one 1996, one 1999, one 2000, one 2003. It's a multiple choice. What is, now Trump is fat. Okay. He's really fat. They put on his physical. He weighs 230 pounds. I'll tell you, I'll make anybody this bet. Trump, you get on the schedule, scale and every pound under 230, I'll pay you a thousand. If every pound over 230, you pay me $10 and I'm going to bank. So the, the question is, what is the last year you think that Trump actually saw his dick? I think it's 2000. I don't think he's seen it in this century. Remember, the century really doesn't start till January 1st, 2001 kind of weird thing, but I, I give him the benefit of the doubt. That's what, that's how fat, what a fat piece of shit I think he is. Now there's some, there's another part about Trump and people have said this, it's been reported. 
Adam Kinzinger, who's a trained military person, people around him say he stinks. The man actually smells like shit. And he has a long history with shit. I'm just going to be, I'm going to put out the evidence for you. First of all, if you remember that doctor he had, who he claimed said he was the finest specimen that he'd ever seen. He wrote up some stuff. Then he sent his goons, and I think the guy's name was Dr. Borstein or something like that. Because somebody told me, unfortunately, since deceased, I, I, I don't know, but I remember it well. And he sent people in there to retrieve his health records. Now, interestingly enough, Dr. Borstein was a GI doctor. Now, most people have an internist. I have an internist. You have an internist. I, you know, if we got to get some procedure or something, they'll say, go go up to the seventh floor and see such and such and you know, whatever, okay? How many – Trump has golden toilets. You know anybody has golden toilets? You know anybody that talks about toilets as much as Trump does? Go in – Use your creativity. Get all of his scatological references, all the times he talks about talks. Then he says, and he says this all the time. He says, you go to the toilet, you got to flush it 10 times. All right. It's something that we all have in common on this YouTube channel that everybody does. We go to the bathroom. We flush the toilet. I have to tell you, I flush it one time. Why does he have to flush the toilet 10 times According to himself, this is his own admission. His wife will not get around him. Go and do research. When he, what, what, what can you do? What can you, if he has a rally, like I said before, hire some money, hire one of these planes, and I expense it if you think. Trump stinks. Get a Trump cutout with a diaper on it. And offer a picture, people can take a picture next to Trump with a diaper on. All right? Go, go, find out, use your creativity. There's all kinds of these local talk radio shows, and a lot of them in these red areas in Wisconsin. And you gotta be strategic. You gotta think Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, you know, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, you know, you know the usual suspects. Find out who call in, sandbag. He said, I have a question to ask. How bad does Trump smell? Why won't his wife eat lunch with him? How many times, how many times do you flush your toilet? They'll, they'll get mad. They'll cut you off. What do you care? Find out what sites they go to. Find out that a lot of them still have, like, newspapers. Find the newspaper in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Send letters to the editor. Do something. Just sit there and, and of course... People are going to say, well, it's a, you know, this is not a, this is a kind of low, low level thing accusing the guy of, of stinking. Screw him. Go write your stories about in the Atlantic and the, the dangers to democracy and go get your Glenn Kessler, Daniel Dale fact check box and keep doing it. I'm all for you. It ain't working. This, I, it, 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 we got to do it. We got to pursue this. We got to pursue it with vigor. We have to mock him. And we have to mock him in a consistent way that he's fat and he stinks. And if you break through, people are, you know, no one wants to be around somebody that, you know, can't control themselves, can't control what to eat, can't control their, 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 their bodily movements. And just keep pounding it home. And don't wait. No orders are coming from headquarters. All right. This is not anything, you know, in the, one of my favorite moments in history was during the Battle of Chattanooga in the Civil War. And there was a thing, and if you go there, you can see it. I think they call it Missionary Ridge. It's just what you think. It's a ridge right kind of in the middle of Chattanooga. And the Confederates had the high ground. And Grant and was trying to attack it, and he had uh, Sherman in one flank, and I don't know, McPherson or, or, or Sheridan or somebody on the other flank, and they were trying to hit it from the side. It, it wasn't going very well, and he was down in the command bunker at the base of Missionary Ridge, and all of a sudden he noticed these soldiers started just going up 
right up the middle of Missionary Ridge. And he looked at his age, I think it was probably Rawlins or something, and he said, who ordered those soldiers up there, General? Uh, uh, who ordered those soldiers up there? And the guy looked, he says, General, nobody did. They just went. They just went. All right. I, I think the guy that led them was actually a, 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 one of Melamon, a guy named Arthur MacArthur. He was the father of that famous asshole, Douglas MacArthur, but I'm not going to go ahead. What, what we got to be is we have to be the Union troops at Chattanooga. They can do the press can do that flanking movement and the campaign can do the from the south and they can do from the north. What we gotta do is grab our piece. We gotta be like commandos. We go, you know, put a put a knife in our mouth, put some camouflage on and go after these bastards. Because they might win. And we can't take a chance. And we can't sit home and do what I've been doing and throw crap at the wall and call people and get frustrated and try to think of talking points that I can do on MSNBC or CNN or, or maybe some kind of piece I could submit. No, that ain't, that, that's not going to get it. What's going to get it is we have to use mockery. We have to use ridicule. You can use, I, I, we got all kinds of people that comment on this. If you got ideas, put them in the comments. If somebody's got an idea how to, I'm not very good at technology, how we can better organize this. But we just can't sit here and, and take the risk of this country going right down the goddamn tube. Because right now, barring something, the, the, the risk is too high. It's too great. And I, I don't, you know, I don't want a president that no one wants to get around because he smells so goddamn bad. And you, you, can, you, you can book that he does. So... Uh, I'm going to come back with more ideas. Uh, you can do more. I've, I've talked to any number of people uh, who think this is a, might be a, a good way to go. But we got to try something. And sitting around and doing nothing is not an option. A fact check box is, I don't think, going to help any. Long form journalism is not going to help any. Good or great. And do investigative report. But we know everything about this guy. He met, he kicked all of his advisors out to meet with Putin. Did he, he, the, the, he's so, do you really think there's not a P-tape? Come on. I mean, how compromised. It was a story. It was great. The Democrats in the, in, in the House did. He made $7.5 million from China while he was president. Do you think anybody knows or cares? It's been in the press. You read about it. You saw it. It, and it's not moving the needle, people. We got to try this, and if it, and you got to be relentless. You got to keep doing it. You got to push it. And you know, if we could knock three quarters of a percent off of him, shit, that might be, that might save the country. Because every time that you 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 flip one Trump voter, you actually get a net of two. And you know, I was involved in 2020. We did some pretty effective stuff like this. We got to go after him. We have to mock him. We have to humiliate him. We have to be as mean to him as he is to people, to the rest of the people in this country. He likes to mock people. And my idea is don't get mad. Don't get hurt. I can't believe you said that. Let's mock him back. Let's mock him better. Let's mock him more. And let's mock him more effective. My strategy is mock, mock, mock. And please think about it. If you feel like you can, join me in this effort. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take our nose and we're going to push this thing right up the hill. And, and, you know, you can wear, make a thing Trump stinks, put a clothespin on your nose. That's what we used to do when we were kids. I, I, I'm going to introduce you to some, some other things as we go on. I'm open to ideas, but I will tell you right now, as we start this election year, I'm feeling nervous. I'm, I'm concerned. I'm, I'm scared. And I just can't sit here and do nothing. Maybe what I'm doing is, you're right, it's a futile and stupid gesture. Well, say I'm futile and stupid. I don't care. You're not going to hurt my feelings. But we got to try something here, folks. So I love you all, and we'll be back. And 
we'll have more mockery coming your way. And don't worry, we're going to do some humorous things also. It's not going to be all, all terrible. So again, Happy New Year. See you. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. After supper, my mother. No, never mind. Not that one. Okay. Bye.